We're here in Cleveland, the House of Blues, the Mid-American Conference football preseason get-together. Head coach Scott Leffler with us now. And coach, for you, another go-around here with the preseason get-together. I know for you coaches, the prep never ends, but this is sort of a rite of passage where it, you, the season's almost here, right? It's almost here. Uh, normally, uh, you try to sneak out a few weeks in July, and whenever you're on vacation in July and you start seeing Shark Week, you normally know it's uh, it's time to go to go back to work. Your uh, your stomach starts to get that feeling. The grass smells different. You can just tell that football's uh, right around the block. Speaking of different feel, you bring back the vast majority of your team from last year. That's got to be. A comforting thing for you and your staff that some of that ground you plowed in previous camps and previous seasons is now stuff you don't have to go over again, right? No question about it. It uh, this will be uh, our best football team since I've been here. In regards to, uh, we finally have got some older guys that are that are driving the locker room, which is huge. We've been a coach-driven team here for the last three years, a total rebuild. And um, you feel much better whenever you know that there's some older guys in that locker room um, starting to drive the ship. And when you got that, you've got a chance. So we've been following Dave's model, uh, Coach Clawson, and uh, you know we're at, a, we're, at a, we're at a point where we should have competitive teams now. Another thing that can bring you comfort is that Last year, your defense showed a lot of moxie. It played very well for Coach Eric Lewis. A lot of those guys are back. And that's something at Bowling Green that, uh, frankly, we have not had for a while. A, a team that might start with defense. You know what? We're going to we're gonna have a chance to have a really good defensive team. Uh, when we came in, uh, we have some old school values here. And uh, it was to build the defense. That was our number one priority. And um, I think we've done a great job recruiting the D linemen. I think we're uh, very good up front. Uh, we've got linebackers that can tackle. And I think uh, we've got some young guys in the secondary that uh, are, are going to play really well for us, along with some veterans. You know, you got Davon Ferguson coming back, Jordan Anderson, Chris Bacon, a great addition uh, from Georgia State. So we're going to have a chance uh, to play defense. And uh, um, hopefully not have to score 60 every game. <laughs> well, with that in mind, offensively last year, you showed improvement in every real statistical measure, but the offensive line was a unit we talked about a lot last year. Guys playing before, really it's their time with their physical maturity. It was clearly something that, that held you back. This year, we're gonna see some new faces up there, and, I, and I'm guessing coming into camp, the number one thing is you got to get the O-line right. No question about it. It's been the number one priority. We had the ability. We, we sat in a staff meeting last year and uh, discussed, are we going to go down the transfer portal? And we did. Uh, the reason that we didn't is we felt that we needed another class of four-hour radius guys to build our culture. Uh, so we made a decision knowing that we were going to take our lumps last year. But for the longevity of the program and to get the program moving in the right direction, we didn't go down the transfer portal. So we knew that it was going to be tough sledding up front, and it was. And uh, now we've got those guys that have played last year that got some experience. They're bigger, stronger. But we've added a ton of additions on the offensive line that are older that can continue to let these younger guys develop so we can keep this thing going up front and finally have a uh, really good front on both sides of the ball. Coach, as we talk about the offensive linemen in particular, how much have you been able to see slash work with them, the transfers, I mean, since they didn't play for you last year? Are there any of those guys that have had significant work with the coaching staff as of yet? Jakari Robinson, um, he transferred. Uh, he was a two-year starter at Cincinnati, then transferred to Memphis, and now he's uh, on our team, and uh, he's been a tremendous leader. Uh, he's married, he has a child, he does things the right way, he's got a 3.4 GPA, um, works you know, to support his family and is an absolute machine on the field. He's really taken uh, these young guys and these transfers underneath his wing. He's been extremely mature 
and um, he's a good football player. And it doesn't hurt that he's he's a 600 pound bencher and almost a 700 pound squatter. Those things help. Those things are making those you a things lot help. Yes, no they do. About it. So as we look at camp overall for your team, for your coaching staff now, what are what are some of the goals that you're, you've laid out for camp to make sure this team is ready as they can be when you go to Los Angeles? Well, number one, uh, consistency. Um, we were an up and down organization last year. And when you're an up and down organization that's a coach driven, driven team, uh, you're going to beat Minnesota and then you're going to lose the next week to someone that you should. Uh, so consistency is, is huge. We want to be able to execute on all three phases on a consistent basis. And when we do have a bad practice, it's a once in a blue thing. Uh, but we wanted to have really consistent work um, throughout this training camp. Speaking of all three phases, Coach, the last thought here, special teams, you were very good there last year. You lost basically the whole contingent there. What should we expect from your special teams kicking game in particular, or is that really a question that is going to be solved in camp? Well, we think we know who our, our punter is going to be. We think we know who our kickoff guy is going to be. And uh, it is a complete race to see who our place kicker is going to be. Um, I think it's a two, three man race and uh, they've been battling all summer and it's going to be a, that, that'll be an interesting competitive deal in terms of, uh, and, and I'll let that thing go right to the very end. Uh, I want to watch all three of these guys compete and we'll find out who our best kicker is. A lot of things to do as the season approaches. And uh, we also uh, want to reach out and, uh, ah, got a question from the gallery, from the fans. Uh, what should we expect to see? Do you have a, I guess, a baseline expectation? I don't know if we want to put a, a win number on it or a certain metric on it. What should fans, though, expect from this team this season? Yeah, it's just like I said in the business model. I think we're a little bit ahead of uh, where uh, where we should be in year four. Uh, I thought uh, with the transfer portal and the additions and knock on wood, we've uh, brought in some really good players that have meshed really well with our locker room. Uh, there was a... Um, there was really a process of, of deciding who we were bringing in transfer wise. And um, we, we think that now uh, we could have a super, super competitive football team uh, on the east side. And um, we're going to look, um, look to be in every single football game and try to find a way to win the east. Well, the season starts at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena with UCLA. Coach, good luck in your preparation and good luck this season. Thanks, Todd. I appreciate you.